Good morning. Good morning. The siding is looking good. I am happy to say we are just above the windows. So now we get to go up and finish that. And then once that siding is done, we just have the flashing on this side. And then we still got to side the other side, but that will be a lot easier and quicker being up in the air working on a lift slows it down all the up and down up and down painting and cutting but it's coming out nice we got another big rainstorm last night we've got like three quarters of an inch of rain in like a half an hour it was crazy so there's a lot of other projects on hold i was just looking over behind me and gina's secret garden that project's been put on hold just because it's been so wet. Everything is muddy out there. So it's a lot of projects we can't work on right now, but luckily this one we still can. So as much of a bummer it is that we had to wait to finish siding, at least we have something to do with all this rain, I guess. We have lots of things we can do, yeah. <laughs> I forgot you had flashing to do. Yeah, we gotta flash it. Wow. Good thing you covered that. Yep. Figure out what are you doing, mister? All right, we can cut like a 10, a 10 footer, an eight footer, a six footer. We'll start off with a pattern like that and then we can do the other edges and get those ones done. And I'm thinking instead of going full length pieces, we'll use up a bunch of our short pieces out here because we're not gonna see that as good. How do I keep the long pieces for the other side? So we are getting to the very last bundles and we still have the side to do and we wanted to make sure we got the back done while we have the lift instead of doing the side and then running out on the top here. So we're just trying to be really good about getting the right measurements and getting the right, not waste any, plus try to use up. In the back side, nobody's gonna see. So if we do some ends, a little bit of piece work here, it's not gonna be as noticeable if it was in the front or the side. So we are gonna try to do the best we can with what we got. Plus we don't really wanna have to get more anyway because they could be a different color. The tint could be off a little. So we're just trying to do our best. I'm thinking we can use these ones. Let me just measure the first one. I made a bunch of cut pieces the other day. Okay, so this one I can't because it's the wrong direction, but those two for sure we can use. And when I cut them, I made sure I cut the ends and painted everything and got them ready. So we wanted a 10 footer. This is just shy of 10 feet. So that's perfect. This one is a seven footer. So then if I get like a five footer, we'll get those three up and get some other pieces cut. Find one more. All right, I have a four footer, so we'll use that one. We're trying to use up all of our cutoffs. They're not scraps, they're just cutoffs. We want to use them all up on the back side.
then you're gonna text me? You're gonna text me? I'm gonna text you So I can get my phone. So he's texting me the measurements and I wanna cut. I'm a little nerve wracking because I don't wanna mess up because we are getting limited on our siding. I'll text you the measurement for the other end in a minute. Well, we're starting to get to the peak, so now we have to have 45s on both sides. That means that means we're getting close to being done with the back side, and that will be so good. So, it took me a minute to get back to cutting. Now I'm going to switch it up again and do two 45s on each side. So I need 107 and three quarters from long point to long point. So I'm just excited that I know what long point to long point is. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hopefully, I get it right. Then I'm going to get those painted and get them back to Al. That is looking really good. We're gonna try going with the next one with a full course, just two 45s on each end and seeing how that works. And if that works, we got the formula down, we can just keep cutting them all one length. And Easier said than done, but that's the idea. Go 99. I had a thought come to my mind. I don't know if they already make them or not, but you know how like you can have uh, a scrub brush with soap in it, or you have like the glue thing with water. If you had a thing that you could put paint in, like a little small thing, squeeze it and the paint would just keep going. They probably already make one. That would make this a lot easier than have to keep dipping it in um, for the paintbrush to do the edges. That would be a perfect thing. So if you are gonna be doing siding and you know of this thing, we're almost done, so we don't need it now, but. 
you should use it because that will make it a lot easier because you need to paint the edges to have it protected from the weather. So that would be a nice thing to have. Let us know if that's already a thing because I would be interested in just seeing it. Maybe I just thought of it. Maybe it can be a thing. I don't know. See, I'd give it a little squeeze here. Some paint would come to the top and then I could just go just like this. All right, just was up there getting measurements. We gotta cut a hole for our stink pipe in the next couple of pieces. But I'm gonna do the first one first and make sure it comes out right before I put too many holes. It's like got concrete on it. I don't know how that would happen. Me neither. There, it is concrete. We didn't even have it over there, did we? I don't think so. <laughs> Cleaned up easy, at least. All right, let's get some lines marked so I know where to screw to. Paint it. Yep. I got also got to get a longer stink pipe after, and then glue it all together. I will be excited when we get the everything all done on the house part, and then we can have this cleaned up. Maybe get like a bench or something to sit on. We do love having this garage door, and we open it, and we do have this screen with a magnetic. It works great but I think I need a more heavier dutier one because the animals are going down away at the bottom and it's ripped. So other than that, it's worked really, really good. I'm doing like Gina's dance. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it works. <laughs> the piece or your dance? The piece. He just gave us a thumbs up. The suspense was killing me, but it was good. Hopefully we can go two for two. So 13 and a half is the edge. And then three quarters of an inch.
And then what, like two pieces after that maybe? Yeah, I think I'll put fuel in it though. It's just about out of fuel and I don't want to run out. Yeah. So I'm gonna go grab a gas, I'll go grab a diesel jug and top it off because it's pretty low. Because then what happens? Are you really stuck up there? Well, until you put fuel in it and bleed the fuel lines, yeah. Well, I don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> That's why I gotta make sure I put some fuel in it. Because it's not gas, it's diesel. So you gotta bleed the lines if it runs out. Yeek. Well, for both of our sanity, you better go get some fuel so we don't have to do that. You, so don't you wanna... won't be stuck up top and I don't have to figure out how to do all this stuff down at the bottom. I don't know how to bleed fuel lines or any of that. You don't want to learn under pressure? I don't like to do stuff under pressure. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say we were down to about an eighth of a tank. That's where it's at and that's full. Wow, and you didn't fill it up before now? Nah. Surprise. I was living on the edge. You were. That surprises me that that was that low because Al used to never even leave a vehicle with less than half a tank. He wouldn't do anything. He'd always have to fill up. And I'm like, it's got half a tank. And he's like, I need more gas. So I'm really surprised. I told you I was living on the edge. Living on the edge. That's pretty good. Two and a half to three gallons. We've been running this thing for almost two weeks and leaving it running the whole time. I can hear it. It's coming up. There she is. All right. All right, you gotta cut it in a little bit deeper and then it'll sit down where it needs to. Take three. It's all this little stuff that takes all the time. I know, but it's so hard you can't really get up there and measure because it's the top behind the pipe. No, I now. know, but like it's not, it's just taking, you think it's going to be take a couple minutes, it's just a couple pieces, but it's usually what stuff like this, it takes forever. All right, this time I'm bringing my jigsaw up with me so that way if I need to recut it, I can. We're gonna have to make a whole new piece, but I just gotta find out exactly where the hole goes because it keeps being off a little bit. So we'll get it right, get a template, and then we'll get it perfect on a new piece. But for now, at least we'll know what we have done. All right, I think I got it figured out now. All right, if this does it, we should only have like three or four pieces left after this one. I thought you said two. I don't know, we'll find out. Two, three, four.
Last one on the back anyways. We still have the other side to do, but that's nothing compared to getting this back done. I could not imagine having a three-story house or a wider two-story building. It's a lot just with this little tiny house. Couldn't imagine what a full-size house is like. Good thing you built a tiny house. Good thing. Then I guess there'd realistically be one more little sliver. So go minus 8.35. I think that's gonna be it because the next little sliver would be two and three quarters of an inch. It's not even worth it. I'm not holding my fingers for that. You'll never see. That'll be it. I get it painted up and then I'll have to bring up the Brad nail gun and use the little Brad nail gun to nail that in place. All right, I gotta get this last piece up. I was gonna do the stink pipe and put it in there permanently, but I don't wanna do that until we have the flashing up, because that way I can take the stink pipe off, do all the flashing, and then put the stink pipe in, and then I'll glue it in place at that time. So let's get this one up and see what it looks like all finished. I'm sure Al's gonna be glad that that stink pipe will be finally done very, very soon because it's been a thorn in his side, I think. Yeah, it's been a pain. It's been a pain, but we're figuring it out. It's gonna be what it's gonna be at this point after it's done. Yep. Cause you're not climbing up there. Nope, that's why we're doing it now. We've tested it out, it seems good. We're gonna go a little bit higher, so that's good. I like to put a finish nail in the ends of every board because where there's a 45 or 60 degree angle, the very end sometimes can flare out. Where if I put a little finish nail in it, it just holds it nice and tight. And then that way, when the lift's not here, we don't have to worry about any of them kind of like flying in the wind. So I'll get that side when I'm up there doing the flashing. Well, I think we did pretty good on the back. We started with eight bundles. We have four, bundles and I think three pieces in here so that should be more than enough to do this side with a f I bet you we'll still have some left over because we only used three bundles three and a half bundles for the back side so one bundle goes quite a long ways which is good do you think you can do like a bunch of long pieces for here yeah it'll be because that's 16 I think that's like 20 feet so I'll be using a bunch of long and then yeah I gotta cover this pile back up because we're supposed to be getting a lot more rain. So we wanna cover this up so it don't get rained on. We've been getting a lot of crazy weather around here and a ton of rain. So there is a lot of things I haven't been able to keep up on and a lot of it is the grass and the pasture. We've got a lot of it kept up on but the some areas where we've had the cows. I haven't been able to go behind them and mow. We gotta clean up some of the pastures down there some over here and today while it's not raining i am gonna take care of that there's more to do on the back of the house but we have more rain coming in and we've usually been able to work in between raindrops on the house so we're gonna save that for tomorrow during the rain but today while it's still dry out and the fields are somewhat dry everything's pretty soggy we're gonna jump over here and stop mowing and cleaning up my goal is is to get the areas mowed that they've already been on get the weeds cut down and get any of the grass that's gone to seed mowed down get it growing up and they'll at least be able to go out on it once more and i am hoping down there where we had the chickens i want to get that mowed down i'm hoping that all the nitrogen from the meat birds will help it grow really good and i'm hoping to 
get that growing good and have that for like their winter feed or I should say like fall, late fall feed, I can put them out there and let them graze those areas down. So we're trying to plan ahead and keep like a good amount of grass ahead of us, but also have some for an early winter, late fall grazing area. So I've read some cool things about that, about stockpiling forage on the fields and how good it can be for your animals. So I want to try to have that done beforehand. And while I'm mowing, I'm going to be listening to a podcast. If you want to listen to a fun podcast, check out the podcast that me, Jason from Solar Land, and Ben from Holla Homestead have been doing. It's on every app out there except for iTunes right now. iTunes is taking forever, but we're on Spotify and all the other podcast apps. We could be on iTunes now. It's called Homestead Shop Talk, and we also have a YouTube channel called Homestead Shop Talk. So if you like to watch the podcast, you can check it out over there. So I'm going to find one to listen to, and let's get mowing. This area is looking really good. The spot right here, beginning of spring, was all washed out. I put hay up here and I put the chickens on it, the egg layers in their mobile chicken coop and got them kind of scratching everything. And that's coming out really nice up there by the ditch bank mower that we had the cows in there. That's really good clover. So I wanted to cut that down what they didn't eat. And then we still have some sparty stuff over here. We're getting a lot of rain. I think where this is lower, it's really coming down here and washing out any of the grass that tries to start growing. The new growth just doesn't take to all the heavy rain, but we are getting there. <sighs> I'm trying to think where I want to go next. I think we're going to go to where we had the meat birds, get that mowed down a little bit. It's not terrible. I have a fence I need to pick up and then get that all cleaned up and hopefully get some good grass growing there and in the winter time, late fall. We can get the cows out there again and I don't know, we'll see how it's going. But so far, I'm really liking how everything's turning out. Can't wait, I can't wait to look back at the end of the summer and see what this pasture looks like two years ago it looked like that right behind us this was all woods the whole property and we're going and making some into pasture we get some for the workshop there'll be more pasture over here behind the house we're gonna be making it into Gina's secret garden we got a whole area out there that we'll be doing all different kinds of growing and then all down this side that we had cut this past winter we're gonna turn that into some kind of pasture I'm not sure what and how yet but there's going to be a pasture and there's a lot of woods here that we want to turn into silvo pasture like right here that'll get turned into silvo pasture behind the house before we get to the secret garden that's all loaded with maples trees and other trees but we want to save the maples and take everything else out and have that into a silvo pasture so we still have plenty of work to do but i'm just thinking about all the delicious food we're gonna be able to raise here because of it. We'll have our pigs out on a lot of pasture, rooting and eating amazing stuff. We'll have the cows, we'll have the meat birds, the egg layers, lamb. Think of all the delicious food that we're gonna be able to eat and hopefully do some other things with. So that excites me. And that's one of the things that keeps me going. Cause you know what? Cause you know what? We get to eat delicious food and that's one of our whys that we do this. So we can eat delicious food that makes us feel better. And I want you guys to be able to eat delicious food that makes you feel better. Because food is a huge part of how we feel. A lot of us don't realize it. It took me a long time before I realized it. But I feel better now in my 40s than I did in my teens. So that's one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons we're able to do all the things that we do here. Is we just feel so much better. And I just hope I can keep saying that year over year after year. 
I'm feeling better now in my 50s than I did in my 40s. I'm feeling better now in my 60s than I did in my 50s. That's one of my goals. So this is all part of that. It's so beautiful out, look at that. I can't believe we got more rainstorms coming. I'm gonna enjoy this moment while I can. Well, the sun is setting and it is beautiful. We got their old pasture area mowed down. We got it moved for a fresh spot tomorrow. Milking stanchions up there, plant it up high. So then if it, when it rains tomorrow, it should be dry. Then if it gets really wet, we can just start dragging it down a little bit every time versus staying down here. If we leave it down low, we get all the rain tomorrow. And the next day, all that rain's gonna wash down from above. So we should have the least amount of rain up high. And I'm hoping we can keep it there for a couple of days. Just depends on if she goes number two in there or not. So this is where we're gonna end the video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. You guys are a huge blessing to us in our homestead. Look at that beautiful sunrise. See you guys right back here in the next video. Bye.